Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to be taking a look at three emulators, RPCS3, Yuzu and Xenia, an Xbox 360 emulator that I haven't taken a look at on my channel in a very long time. There is a hell of a lot to cover in this video in relation to new upgrades and updates to these emulators, new game compatibility and performance, so let's jump straight into it and take a look at things, starting off with some PlayStation 3 emulation. First up, we're going to be taking a look at RPCS3, where thanks to a brand new update and PR introduced by KD11, Metal Gear Solid 4's graphics have now basically been fully fixed. This includes the layering of graphics where you could see textures of buildings through characters and characters through buildings, invisible character and enemy models, and invisible weapon models. Aside from the fixes to Metal Gear Solid 4, we have also seen significant upgrades to other games, including Lord of the Rings Conquest, Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, Battlefield Bad Company, and also the awesome racing game Blur. While there are undoubtedly going to be hundreds more improvements from this update, it is not currently merged to the master version of RPCS3, so if you wish to test it out for yourself right now, I will leave a link to that PR down in this video's description. Please also be aware that while it's not in master right now, it will likely be in the next few days or weeks, so as always, make sure to keep your emulators as up to date as possible so that you can reap the rewards of all of these amazing upgrades. Now, while yes, Metal Gear Solid 4 does progress into gameplay with largely fixed graphics, everything isn't perfect, especially in relation to the game's stability. Depending on your CPU, you can expect a very good performance in gameplay, however, you are going to crash fairly frequently and there are some fairly severe popping issues like you can see right here with these LODs. On top of this, there are also lots of other graphical issues and bugs that can occur in gameplay. The one you're watching right now is just one example of these bugs, a fairly hilarious one where your body basically turns inside out and the NPCs and AI in the game world just seem to kind of go haywire and start shooting at the sky. This may not happen to you in your gameplay at all, and it only really happened randomly to me on one or two occasions. Regardless, I just wanted to make you aware of the fact that bugs like this still exist in gameplay, and until they're fixed, this game cannot be considered playable. Moving on to our next emulator, let's take a look at Yuzu, where with the implementation of a brand new LLE buffer cache, Super Smash Bros Ultimate has seen a dramatic improvement to its rendered graphics in-game. In previous videos of mine, you would have seen that all of the character models were previously T-posing and they also had completely black textures all over the character model. Unfortunately though, while yes, these models and graphics are now largely fixed in gameplay and performance is very, very respectable also, the game is still going to softlock if you enter into any regular battle. What you're watching right now is me utilizing the training mode in order to show off the rendering of the graphics. As I said, the graphics are rendered really, really well. You can see just how well in this Kirby stage. However, until they fix these softlocks, apparently related to a kernel issue, this game is going to remain completely unplayable. So next up, we're going to be taking a look at an emulator I haven't visited in a very long time. Let's take a look at Xenia, an emulator for the Xbox 360. Now, before I get started, I want to put a massive, massive asterisk over the playable state and in-game nature of the games I'm going to be covering at the start of this Xenia section, mostly in relation to Gears of War and the Fable series. So for anybody who hasn't used Xenia before, you will not be aware of the fact that Unreal Engine games have quite a difficult time progressing in-game. Due to a workaround or a hack which was implemented by a user in the Xenia community, many of these Unreal Engine games are now able to progress into gameplay and actually render graphics for the first time. These include, but are not limited to, Gears of War 1, 2 and 3 and the entire Fable trilogy also. At the start of this section, since it's the only game I currently have available to me, I'm going to be taking a look at Gears of War 2, where, as you can see by this pre-rendered cutscene, this title is now booting and even goes in-game rendering some graphics. Now, I do warn you, the graphics that are rendered aren't exactly the best, with most of the complex geometry completely missing from gameplay, and the only way to view your character model is to ADS or aim down sight. 
Now, based on images and videos I've seen on Xenia's Discord, Gears of War 1 and 3 are in pretty much the exact same state as Gears of War 2, so obviously a lot of work is going to have to be done to get these games running and rendering in tip-top shape. Now, in relation to performance, it actually ran at a fairly consistently locked 30 frames per second, but this is possibly expected considering that 90% of the objects in-game are currently not rendered. Hopefully, Xenia's developers are going to be able to bisect and see exactly how this workaround or hack gets Unreal Engine games to render and go in-game so that one day we will have another awesome emulator on which to play the Gears trilogy. Speaking of trilogies, let's move on to our next group of games, Fable, Fable 2 and Fable 3. Starting things off with the first game in the series, Fable is now also a booting and even goes in-game somewhat rendering graphics. It does have this weird yellow or greenish tint to it, and again, once you do get into actual gameplay, similarly to Gears of War, a hell of a lot of the in-game geometry is just completely missing. As with Gears, it also runs at a fairly consistent 30 frames per second, but unlike Gears, this game also constantly softlocks, meaning that regardless of its render quality, this game is not playable in any way at all. Next up we have Fable 2, and very similar to all of the other Unreal Engine games, this is also now a booting, loads into game, and also semi-correctly renders its graphics. I'm using the term semi-correctly fairly loosely, and once we've loaded into gameplay you can see exactly why. As with Fable 1, this title is also heavily missing a lot of its rendered graphics, however unlike Fable 1, this game does not softlock or crash basically at all. I in fact played it for about 3 hours even with heavily broken graphics just like this and in all of that time I didn't have a single crash in gameplay. Oddly enough though, the frame rate did seem to lock itself consistently to 15 frames per second and regardless of what setting or what I did with any of the config files for Xenia, I couldn't get it to move past 15. Since Fable 2 is definitely my favourite game out of this trilogy, I hope it gets some attention and some graphical fixes very soon as I would love to have this playable on an emulator. Moving on again, let's take a look at the final game in this trilogy, Fable 3. This title was a bit of an oddity as once I got to the title screen it seemed like it froze but when I just mashed the start button on my controller it actually loaded through to this loading screen and even gave me the character select at the very start of the game. You can see that as with Fable 1 and 2 it's very very graphically broken and it even runs at much lower performance levels than either of the two previous games. While I was able to progress as I said to this screen and even select my character, basically what happened was every time I got to this loading screen where I would do an auto save, the game would just softlock and crash and I wasn't able to progress any further. So now that we've taken a look at all of the Unreal Engine games that I currently have available to me, let's now take a look at some other popular titles for the Xbox 360, starting things off with Halo 3. While obviously the Master Chief Collection coming to PC does put a small bit of a dampener on the compatibility and usability of the Halo games on Xenia, I personally still think it's very important to have these games emulated on their original format, the 360. In relation to this game's render quality, stability and performance, it has seen a significant uptick in all of those departments. It has seen a lot of rendering fixes, the most prevalent of those would be the fact that the screen no longer distorts when a brute uses a bubble shield, your screen no longer distorts when you're fighting any of the jackals who have their personal shields, and also the game has seen the majority of its text and fonts in game menus and game loading screens now completely fixed and rendered. Unfortunately, Halo 3 still has some crashing issues that are completely unavoidable at certain stages of certain levels, so this game is still not fully playable. Let's now move on to our next game and another in the Halo franchise, Halo Reach. So as you can see by these menu screens, they have completely fixed all of the font rendering issues, meaning that you can now actually properly traverse through these different screens without having to rely completely on memory. In-game render graphics and performance in-game has also dramatically improved. In my testing for this video, I was in between around 20 to 30 frames per second basically at all times in gameplay, with a few small drops down to around 12 or 14 frames per second when I was compiling shaders. 
Unfortunately, as with Halo 3, Halo Reach also suffers with pretty much random game crashing or soft locking. So again, until that issue is fixed, this game can also not be considered playable. Now, before I move along and take a look at Halo 4, I'm going to take a look at Red Dead Redemption since I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be forgiven for excluding it from a video like this. Since we last took a look at this game, it has seen a lot of upgrades to its graphics, especially so in relation to shadows, lighting and foliage pop-in. One thing I do want to note in relation to our performance is that due to the excessive GPU usage, I was not able to get a lossless capture of exactly how this game is running currently. So basically what I want you to do is for the frame rate you're seeing on screen right now, roughly around 28 or 29 frames per second, basically just add 7 or 8 frames per second on top of that and that's the actual frame rate I am currently seeing in Red Dead Redemption. These higher frame rates are made possible by removing the VSync limit, which allows Red Dead to run at higher frame rates at 1x or 100% speed at frame rates over 30. Now, while the frame rate is super, super playable, there are still a lot of issues with this game, mostly in relation to actual timing of missions, missions being triggered, and there are also a hell of a lot of sound issues. While there are a few workarounds for the previously mentioned timing and mission triggering issues, I would have to say that, at least in its current form, for your average person, Red Dead Redemption on Xenia is not going to be playable. So for our final test of this compatibility and emulator update video, we are going to be taking a look at Halo 4, a very strange game to get running on Xenia. I stay strange because in order to get in game and have it playable, you have to load into gameplay, skip through all of the cutscenes, once in gameplay you have to pause, save and quit, then you have to close Xenia, reopen it and then reload your game, save and once you do that you will be loaded into gameplay where you're going to be able to play Halo 4 in its current form that I'm going to be demonstrating in this bit of gameplay. Performance wise, for me at least, it ran at a locked 30 frames per second and as you can see it also has some very very funny graphical issues and if you've seen previous videos of mine in which I covered Halo 4 this title still has the issue where all of the ragdolls in game are completely broken and just kind of spaz out and jump all over the place. The flickering and slight motion you see all over the screen is in fact Master Chief's legs as I move around the game world and when I come face to face with any of the enemies or NPCs in the game you can see that the exact same thing happens to them where the physics for their ragdoll is just completely broken. Aside from these ragdoll issues and some small strange rendering issues on some of the models in gameplay like for example some of the warthogs on the later stages, this game actually plays quite well if you can put up with the weird issue where you have to skip cutscenes and use the autosave system to actually get yourself into gameplay. Unlike Halo 3 or Halo Reach, this title does not seem to have any soft locking issues once you are actually in game. So hopefully once they fix the weird issue with having to skip cutscenes and indeed the strange apparent CPU related character ragdolls, Halo 4 should be in an awesome place playability wise on Xenia. That's going to be it for this compatibility video for all of these emulators. If there is anything you would like to see me cover or just anything that you have an interest in, please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below this video. Before I go, I want to give another massive thank you to all of the supporters of BSOD Gaming over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome helping to pay for things like my electricity bills, water bills, internet bills, the games I need for testing and absolutely everything else required for the day to day running of a YouTube channel. So if anyone out there would like to help me in what I do, please consider heading to the Patreon link in this video's description and pledging or donating. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like down below, subscribing to the channel if you want to see future videos from me, and hitting the bell icon if you wish to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Once again guys, thank you very much for checking out this video, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.